Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting Jedi Master Yoda with this great great amazing uh, super detailed little sculpt of Yoda and this is going to be a really really cool different painting video and I have to take a moment just to say a big thank you to John and Edward for sending me this one to paint. Now I've made a small video uh, or a small photo here that you can pause and we're going to use just these 12 paints really to paint Yoda and we're going to get a really really nice result out of such a small amount of paints. I'm going to be using a very different set with the Forces of Nature set from Scale 75 but don't worry if you're not comfortable with uh, or if you don't have these paints I have made a video where I'm painting different kinds of green skin tones uh, a little bit elsewhere. I'll put a little pin just here so that you can find it. Now we're going to start using the Ardennes green so this is a really good dark green uh, and as you can see I'm just going to put this in uh, all around the skin so I'm focusing mostly around the face and the head here first just to give you guys an idea as to how uh, the, the paint is nice and thin and how this sort of just takes straight onto the miniature in such a nice even fashion so I'm just going to paint this across like I say the skin so the feet the hands the face things like that um, and as you can see, I'm just going to be using my uh, sort of basing brush. So this is my um, older, more um, sort of uh, broken sort of basing brush so that it, nothing has to be so perfect or, or, or exact or precise. So once that's dry then, we're then going to move on to using a nice little bit of flat brown on the inner part of his clothing. So this is going to be the trousers, uh, the shirt and things like that. So we're just going to use this, uh, this brown tone and again using the same brush, using my basin brush. So this is just a, not a precise brush, but it doesn't matter too much because any mistakes we make, we can always cover over anyway. So it's not the end of the world. And there we go just going to be careful especially around the green areas try not to get the brown on the green and so on and so on so it's good to try to be as precise as possible when you're painting the bases as much as you can because once you've got the uh, the bases in place and you use the washes and things like that to tie things together then it makes it easier to build the colors back up then we're going to use a green ochre um, if you don't have green ochre you can always just use a khaki color that would also do a very very similar sort of thing this is just a slightly lighter uh, color slightly lighter tone that will uh, brighten up really really nicely uh, with other colors on top but this green ochre is practically just a light version of a khaki sort of tone um, and we're just going to paint all of the robe all around the back again trying to be careful not to get this on the greens and things like that that we've painted um, around the back is a lot easier but once you get to the front it does get a little bit fiddly so just try to be as careful as possible especially the underneath as well painting the inside of the the robe itself can be uh, a little bit difficult but don't worry too much just take your time and try to enjoy it as much as possible as you can see where the folds of the robe are just around the front there we go just trying to be careful as I say trying to make sure that we don't uh, sort of mix these colors together so trying to be as precise as possible so that that means we don't have to do as much work a little bit later there we go and paint in the inside of the cloak as i say that can be a little bit difficult just getting onto the inside so just take your time have fun with it um, and you can fix any mistakes that you make as well once that's done i'm going to use an ash gray from ak interactive uh, this and uh, to, just to do a little bit of the base uh, you don't have to follow this you can paint this in sort of any color that you like i'm just adding this little bit on just to kind of give you guys an idea as to what colors and tones that i'm using just to mix this part of the base together um, later on i'm going to do the base and things off camera anyway so it doesn't matter too much if you don't want to follow the base along it just gives you guys an option it just gives you guys something uh, sort of to, to plan and to you know sort of uh, follow along with if you need to or if you'd like to i'm also going to use that dark gray then just to do the hair so this is just giving us a nice base color for the hair so this is a nice dark tone across uh, the back part of his head and then i'm going to use bone white just to pick out a lot of the details across his nails so we've got all these little claws and nails just around his foot or his feet and of course the hands as well as you can see just across the very edges of the nails so i'm just using this bone white color um, just so that again this gives us a nice little contrast between a light color and a dark color because by the time the skin tones turn green um, and we start to brighten those greens up these sort of uh, lighter 
own white white tones are going to really stand out. I'm also going to take my time just to paint the inside of the eyes here as you can see. Eyes are normally a little difficult to catch on camera but with this particular character it is a little bit easier so just showing you how I just paint a little strip of white of uh, light in the eyes and then we're going to use a gun metal just to go around um, Yoda's lightsaber. So this gun metal um, taking a look online and doing a little bit of research into Yoda's um, lightsaber, we've got a silver lightsaber, but with a few little black struts on it. So it's a very basic, simple lightsaber to paint. It's not something that we need to go really, really extreme with. It's just a nice little bit of silver. Then I'm gonna use a black and brown, again, a random brown. You can use any brown that you like. This is just an idea. This is just me trying to use a few different paints and mix things together and just try to do something a little bit different. This is more of a a kind of orangey brown so you could use um, the uh, orange brown from Vallejo to do this that would also work quite nicely for these little sort of tree bits these these little sort of brown areas just going around the rocky uh, parts just like so and I'm just gonna be careful not to get this onto the rocks themselves and again we're gonna use multiple thin layers nice and simple then I'm going to use a small bit of tenebrous grey now this tenebrous grey as I say in the past if you don't have tenebrous grey, you can simply use Vallejo Black. That will do an equally good job. And as you can see, I'm just going to paint the dots in the eyes. Again, this is a difficult, difficult bit to do and also to catch on camera. And the idea and the trick is to try to use the very tip of the brush just to create a small circle. Um, so trying to create a small circular motion so that this captures a small little part of the eye. Once we've done the eye, we're also going to do these little black struts on the lightsaber. As I said, he's just got a very basic, nice and silver and black lightsaber, which is very, very easy to replicate, uh, which is great because that means we're not spending ages on such a small, small part of the model. And then I'm going to use an Arati green, which is a really, really, really bright green. Now, if you don't have this color, again, you can always use different colors. So you could do something like a livery green um, from Vallejo or possibly a scorpion green which is a nice bright green. They seem to have very similar sort of tones. Um, so this color would be nice and vibrant and bright. From there then, we're going to start putting washes onto the miniature and I'm gonna start using a military shader. So this military shader, this military wash color is a dark, dark green wash. Now I'm gonna start by painting this across the skin. So we're going all around the face and you can see this is already picking out all of those really, really, really fine details. What I'm not going to do with this is I'm not going to paint this around the eyes uh, or inside of the eyes. So what we're doing is we're going around the outside of the eyes, leaving that black and white sort of eye pupils and things like that in um, intact. So we're leaving those the color they are. You can see all of those details starting to come out across the face of the miniature by using this one simple stage using this wash. I'm also gonna paint this across the hands and I'm also gonna paint this across the hair as well. Now I'm doing the hair with this color just so that it ties the hair to the face color so that we haven't just got this big area of gray uh, on top. So it kind of ties the colors together slightly and this will allow the colors to sort of merge in a really nice sort of even fashion. I'm um, just trying to be careful around the hands not to get the military shader on other things like the lightsaber or, um, you know, the cloak and things like that. Now, once all of that is dry, we're then going to use strong tone. This is a dark brown, uh, sort of really, really dark tone uh, for... Uh, using washes and we're just going to cover all of the browns in this so we're going to cover all of the um, we're going to cover all of his clothing so as you can see we've got the trousers the shirt and then all around the robe as well just like so and you can really see this is starting to uh, sit in all of those recess points sit in all of the areas where this folds it's picking out all of those details for us we're gonna have a great time then building those colors and building those details back up because this is kind of giving us an idea on the model where these areas areas are and that's what I love about the wash phase this is probably one of my favorite phases although you could paint without washes I really love how when you place a wash on the miniature it kind of points out all of those details and all of those areas for you it's a fantastic fantastic little uh, stage of painting
Now I'm going to go back to the Ardennes green, so that's the base green that we use, that really dark green. And what I'm going to do is using the very tip of a size zero brush. I'm just going to start to pick out and start to build all of those details back up. So we're just going to use the very tip of the brush, as I say. And then I'm just using like a stippling, dabbing effect. And I'm starting to pick out and starting to build those details back up. So what we're doing is we're trying to avoid where the green, uh, where the green wash has sat. So we're avoiding the areas where the wash has sort of darkened them miniature and we're building these colors back up on all of those raised areas so we're managing to pick out all of the details all of the folds all of the creases in the face just like so and bit by bit we're just going to build this up we're going to take our time we're using a nice thin down paint so it takes to the miniature nice and smoothly and evenly and we're just going to take our time and we're just going to dab this color on just building and building and building slowly 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 it doesn't matter if this requires two layers of the same color or three layers of the same color because that way we're going to build our vibrancy and control our vibrancy and control our contrast as much as we like once that's dry, we're going to mix Ardennes Green and Sherwood Green. And we're going to use these at exactly the same way as I always do. So we're going to do this as a half stop, which means we're just going to cover this as a 50-50. So that's one blob of each color so that they have a nice even match. That means anyone can make that combination of color. So you don't need to be put in percentages, one part of this, X amount of this. One on one, so nice and 50-50 is easy. Anyone can mix two blobs of paint together and start to build highlights. It's also a really nice natural way of building the highlights because you've got the base color already included with the mixture. And we're gonna do the exact same thing using that mixture and using the tip of the brush, the very edge of the brush. And we're gonna use the stippling effect just to pick out those details. Now this is gonna slowly start to build that vibrancy and color and lightness. And again, like I say, you can do this in multiple layers. That's the good thing about having thin down paints is you can use two, three, four layers to get the level of contrast and level of brightness and things like that that you really, really want. So yeah, just gonna use the tip of the brush and build this up nice and evenly, nice and smoothly, taking our time, like I say, having fun with it and just slowly building that character up as much as we possibly can. It's a nice and simple way of painting, nice and even way of painting, and anyone can follow along. That's the beauty with it. Once that's done, then we're going to use the Sherwood Green on its own. This is a really nice even tone green. It has a really nice color. This would be really good for things like leaves, foliage, uh, light sort of tones of uh, sort of greenery. It's a really, really lovely color, this Sherwood Green. So again, using the very tip of the brush, as you can see, using the very small stippling effect, I'm starting to use the brush strokes to pick out those details, but to also create my own texture. So using that stippling, using that small dabbing, and using very small sort of brush strokes, we're starting to pick out and build that, um, that texture on the skin as well, as you can see. And now you can see the skin is starting, that vibrance is starting to pick through. You can really see sort of the color starting to change, and we're starting to get that, that sort of more, um, normal sort of color for Yoda's skin tone so we're going to keep sort of one side darker than the other and we're going to focus more on the other side as we build up and we're going to use the Sherwood green and we're going to use a fall green and doing exactly the same thing as what we've done previously which is one blob of each 50 50 nice equal parts we're going to build this up then as a highlight just like so and again using the same technique we're just going to use the tip of the brush to build all of those textures and tones and colors and you can really see now that this is starting to build so, so nicely. We're starting to get some real nice vibrant tones out of the face in such a quick and easy way. So you don't have to be daunted with painting different skin tones, especially when they're different colors like greens, blues, reds. Just use a few colors that you're comfortable with, a few colors that you really like the color of, and mix those into natural highlights for themselves going up in stages. As you can see now, I'm focusing more with the lighter color just across the sort of uh, right-hand side of the face. And as you can see, I'm just using multiple layers and using those stippling sort of uh, small kind of uh, dabbing brush effects. And that's just creating, as I say, all of those textures. There we go. You can see that we're picking out all of those little uh, sort of creases and, and folds in the skin. And it's kind of adding to the fact that he's an old, aged sort of character and things like that as well. 
and we're doing the same thing as we did earlier just around the hands the feet you know we just build in the skin tone up nice and lightly nice and evenly and it's quite therapeutic doing skin um, it's a really interesting sort of uh, thing to paint and especially when you've got a character that has a different sort of color like this with a, a nice light green tone um, it just gives you something completely completely different to to focus on and to work with but all of the same techniques and effects that I've used in the past will all work here as well so the stippling the green tones that I've used on previous models uh, would work here so yeah any videos or any uh, sort of tips or or painting um, sort of effects that you can think they'll all come in handy as you go so with that then I'm going to use a graphite color uh, from the AK Interactive. Now if you don't have this again you could use a couple of different colors. You could use things like the uh, blue gray pale from Vallejo would be a really good option here. Uh, but that's all I'm doing is just using a very small control dry brush uh, just across the, the hair here. I say a very small control dry brush because dry brushing is quite uh, messy. So you don't want to get this on the green that you've spent quite a lot of time doing. Uh, then I'm going to mix graphite and silver grey together using 50-50. So again, half and half. I'm just going to lightly dry brush this across again. Um, and again, if you don't have this one, you could use something like a sky grey would be perfect from Vallejo. That would also make a really nice nice sort of highlight tone and highlight color to it as well and then we're going to go back now and start to build up the clothing so once all of that is dry and we're done we're then going to go back to the flat earth and then we're going to start to build and pick all of those folds and creases in the clothes we're going to start uh, normally what i would tend to do and say to people is start from the inside out because when you're painting on the inside of the miniature it is more difficult to get to so if you make mistakes then um later on it's more difficult to sort of fix so starting from the inside out paint the more difficult and harder to reach areas of the model first so as you can see i'm starting with this little jacket and then we're going to go up and around all of the clothing um, and then we're going to do the cloak and things later so the reason why i start with the inside first is because it is a little bit more difficult and you can make more mistakes once flat earth is dry we're then going to use flat earth and beige brown combined so mixed together again just one blob of each all of the mixing that i do on my channel is just one blob of each that creates very e easy and equal parts of sort of highlighting this allows you to highlight in a confident way without you worrying too much about whether or not you're using the right amounts to accurately replicate what i'm painting and how i'm painting uh, you can literally just put one blob of each and you've got yourself a really nice even simple highlight to go i like these half stops they create great highlights once that's done then you just use the beige brown on its own and as i said these half stops are fantastic because as you can see we've used the base color then we've used this half stop and now we're using the highlight and again then you could use another half stop to highlight further and that's all it is it's just building up in these half stops and it turns out in a really really nice even pleasing um sort of looking uh, painting then it makes it very very easy and pleasing on the eye it looks really really nice so as you can see, I'm just trying to be very careful using the tip of the brush. And at this time, instead of using the stippling effect like we did on the hair, I'm using sort of uh, brush strokes, very, very small, sharp brush strokes, just to create the folds and create the texture of folds and things like that. And I'm following the momentum and movement of the miniature to create this. So as I said earlier, we're then going to use the beige brown and bone white. Again, just one blob of each half and half, and this is going to create a really nice half stop of its own. So this is going to make a really nice highlighted brown. And again, this time we're going to be very, very careful and more precise about where we place this, because this one we want to really, really pick out those highlights. So we're just going to catch the very edges of the folds and the creases in the trousers and around the, the, the sort of shirt or, or little sort of... Um, yeah around the shirt area and as you can see we're just building this up nice and slowly it's always good to have a nice thin paint because it will also blend into the miniature in a nice even fashion again it makes uh, the, the blend and the paint look a lot more natural and a lot more pleasing on the eye whereas if you put just one big thick blob of paint onto the miniature then you can end up with um, sort of a, a garish sort of over the top sort of area where you you might not sort of enjoy 
once that's done then we're then going to move on to doing his cloak and we're going to start by going with the green ochre again so as i said don't worry if you don't have the green ochre you can use a khaki something like a zandri dust or a khaki color from vallejo uh, would be absolutely fine those work equally as well um zandri dust from games workshop would be a good good alternative to this um, and that's all we're going to do now is just using the tip of the brush we're going to use brush strokes just to sort of build up and pick out all of those creases and all of those folds as you can see the paint is nice and thin you can see that by the fact that it's allowing and leaving uh, quite a bit of the um, sort of darker tone underneath the show through as well and that's great because the transition then between sort of the darker areas and the lighter areas isn't going to be too extreme and that way then it's going to allow the paint to look a lot more natural a lot more neutral and again it's going to be more pleasing to the eye and that's all we're going to do now is just go around all of those raised areas all of those folds all of those creases leaving sort of the darker points in the creases and leaving all of those uh, sort of darker now what i'm going to do is just build these sort of brush strokes up and close to the areas where the, the wash has sat and where the wash is sitting and then this gives us control as to how much of the areas where the wash is sitting we want to paint over or how close we want to get like so because we only really want to leave them in the real extreme sort of uh, sort of darker areas right down in the creases just like so the good thing is by the end of the the painting although the paint may seem a little shiny when you're painting and things like that because i always um, cover my miniatures with a matte varnish which is something that i would highly recommend um this ties all of the colors together and it takes away that shine and makes everything a lot more natural anyway so don't worry too much if things like the wash turn out a little bit shiny to begin with because this is something that when you apply your matte wash um, later your matte varnish rather later um, it ties those colors together and it dulls that shine down and brings everything together matte varnish is fantastic not only is it like magic in the way that it ties all of those colors together uh, but it also protects the miniatures as well so this is something that i would always recommend recommend especially if you use your miniatures for gaming uh, because you're going to be handling your miniatures a lot when you spend that time and focus and attention on painting your miniatures the last thing you want is to use them and see all of the paint uh, sort of drop off and come off the miniatures um, that would be uh, sort of a nightmare once that is done then we're also then going to move on and just use the green ochre and light earth together uh, these are two different paint companies uh, but they do sort of blend together in a nice even and equal fashion and this creates a really nice highlight and now we're just going to slowly build up the highlighted raised areas like we've done previously and again now we're just going to be a little bit more specific about where we place them um, and as you can see the nice thin colors from the base color are really starting to tie those tones together cloaks and clothing can be also quite daunting in their own way because you don't want to overdo the the dark colors you don't overdo sort of the shadow areas then it can be daunting trying to build up the layers and and create the highlights without uh, sort of leaving uh, large sort of areas of paint here there and everywhere it, it can be daunting um, but it is just a case of following around the raised areas as you can see and just using the brush stroke to create your own sort of uh, textures and things like that with so it's just about patience and building uh, contrasts and, and building color and tone and as you can see just trying to use the, the, the tip of the brush just to control where the paint is going and where the highlight is going to be on those sort of folds and curves and things like that so yeah just using the very very tip of the brush trying to be careful and then like I say trying to use the tip of the brush to create folds and textures and all these different things I'm just doing a little bit longer on the cloak just to kind of give you guys an idea as to how I'm building this this highlight and these textures and things like that and you can really see how we start to have an effect and how these colors are sort of really bringing Yoda's character to life the, the sort of slightly darker green tone um, on the inside of his uh, clothing versus the sort of khaki light sort of brown colors on his cloak his jedi robe that are really starting to show off then we're going to use the light earth on its own once that is dry and then this is going to be a nice easy even highlight so this again we go in from that half stop now just to the direct highlight and then we could be more specific about where we want this to be so closer to the edges just like so there you go so as i say although it could be quite daunting just building these textures up just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice and you can get there 
That's all painting is, is just practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you become. I'm practicing and I'm learning just the same. I'm always learning new things and you guys always offer me some really great advice and tips as well along with my painting. So yeah, it's all about learning. No one is an overnight expert. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes a lot of painting, a lot of practice. So just keep on practicing, keep on painting um, and you'll get there, you'll get there. So yeah, just using the tip of the brush, as I say, just using a little bit of a longer period of time on the cloak, just to kind of show you guys how the color is showing through. You can really show, you can really see the sort of, uh, the way the highlight is coming through on those sort of folded areas of the robe. You can really see that flowing sort of texture coming through just like so. And like I say, because the paint is nice and thin, we can build this up in multiple layers if we want, and we can really sort of build up these, uh, these layers and these folds, just look at that, just by using using the tip of the brush and there we go there we go just being gentle careful where I place it because we want the highlights to be in certain areas and not in others so we can control sort of the contrast we can control where the light is catching on the cloak you know we can really sort of build this up and get get creative with it once that's done then we and once that is dry we are also going to use a vampiric flash so this is a nice um, really really nice highlight that goes with that light earth tone if you've watched my channel you would have seen me painting these colors before and this vampiric flesh is a great great color now if you don't have these ak interactive colors light earth and vampiric flesh don't worry too much what you can do should you want is use the uh, khaki or a zandri dust and then go up in different stages with a cream color like a bone color so something like a you could use khaki and bone white from Vallejo and slowly build the bone white into the khaki to progressively build the highlights that's fine or if you're a citadel user you could use zandri dust with uh, you shabti bone and slowly build that through so that you build up this natural sort of highlight to the khaki color um, so oh, th those are two other completely different alternative options that could work um, and something that would give you a very similar sort of color tone and a very similar sort of color palette as to what I'm working with here. You can really see this vampiric flesh working wonders. You can really see how this is bringing out those highlights and how we're able to control where we want our creases, folds, highlighting to be in the lighter areas. And again, because we're using uh, nice thin paints, we can use multiple layers to build the vibrancy and the contrast up to however we want. As you can see, the basin bit, I covered that with the color as well, with the shade. And the idea the, behind that was to just to tie the basin part with the model together. We're going to use the spring green color. And that's all we're going to do is using a basin brush. We're going to dab this using sort of a stippling effect just along the lightsaber. So this is going to be a uh, lighter tone than the base color of the erratic brown, uh, erratic green that we use. And this is going to slowly build up this idea and this texture of light coming through or light showing through on the lightsaber. So this is a completely different technique of painting the lightsaber. I know there's loads of different cool ways of doing it. So what else I'm going to do is I'm going to use the spring green and I'm going to add a small amount of white. Um, it's difficult to say exactly how much with this, but what you can do is slowly and progressively add more white into the color to progressively build this sort of uh, lighter tone. And that's all you've got to do as you get lighter is focus more and more towards the middle of the lightsaber. And this creates this highlighted sort of glow in the middle while giving you sort of a darker green around the outside, creating this illusion that there is a light um, and a bright sort of vibrant light color coming from the lightsaber. And it's as simple as that. That's just a different and unique and interesting way of painting lightsabers. Um, so yeah, it's a different way of doing it, giving you guys a different kind of tip. And once that's done, I'm just going to use bone white just to pick out all of the nails, all of the claws again, as you can see. And this nail, as I said earlier, is going to contrast against that green really, really well. And then as an option, and I mean a pure option stage, now that Yoda is done, this is what we're going to look like purely optional we're going to do something called osl now osl is an object source lighting um, and what that means is we're going to bring a little bit of the lighting off the lightsaber onto the miniature and to do that is very 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 simple very quick and easy and very simple to do that's all i'm doing is using a very small controlled dry brush and there's almost no paint at all on this brush and that's all i'm doing is using very very small amounts 
of dry brushing the spring green, so that's the original colour of the lightsaber, across the colours that we've painted. So we're painting this just on the inside of the arm and around his ear. And that's going to build up this illusion and this texture that light is shining off the lightsaber onto the miniature. And once everything is done, and once all is done and everything is finished, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So this is our Yoda and he's all painted. The greens are fantastic. The scale 75 paints are really, really good. The colors perfectly suit the model and perfectly suit Yoda himself and look exactly like he would do in the movies um, and that that's that's him all done now I've added a few extra bits to the base a few rocks a little bit of moss as you can see there's some leaves and things on there and then I've just taken a small short video or two in the garden just to show you guys what it looks like when he's complete this has been overall a really really fun video to make and a really fun model to paint I've absolutely loved bringing this one to life in this video in this part of the video you can really see that OSL shining across his leg and arm so thank Thank you massively to John and Edward uh, for sending me such a fantastic miniature and giving me something great to paint on the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. Thank you for your comments, your likes, your support, all of the suggestions. I really enjoy keeping in touch with you all. I really enjoy uh, conversing with you and going through different modeling uh, things with you and techniques with you. Don't forget, you can send anything that you like, uh, models and things through to my email, uh, which is always on the front of my videos. And I have a special thank you to these guys just here as well. As always, my friends, thank you so much. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one.